Hello, everybody. Welcome in to the Sports Gap. Scott Prather, Jay Walker, and Dr. Brian Maggard. You know, I appreciate the fact that he's here because I'm going to go ahead and give him the credit because you did not have a long, drawn-out hello, everybody. Oh, today. I can still do it. No, I'm sure you did. But I can I hold the long the note. You didn't, so I'm giving him some credit hello. here. Hello. Oh, shut right. up. No, but because because... Look, folks enjoy hearing it because they like how much you don't like it. Yeah, I know. But I don't. I don't have enough time today to just annoy you because we we got us we got a guest in the studio. We have a guest in the studio, and uh, we're going to visit with him about a few things uh, this afternoon. First of all, I have not had an opportunity to do this publicly or privately, but um, what a couple of weeks ago. You got your first championship as an athletic director. That's exactly right. Extremely honored. Extremely honored. Thank you, Coach Lotif, our softball program, those young ladies. Very special. It was very special. And listen, I'm not naive. That program has been going strong for years, and, and the athletic director had nothing to do with that. Yeah, but, but, but it goes on record as I have a championship, two championships now under my belt. And then, uh, as you guys are well aware, we have some individual championships in track and field. Right. So very proud, very honored to be a part of this program. Um, I, is it safe for me to assume you're going to spend some time in Baton Rouge this weekend? You know, a little bit of time. So uh, the Sun Belt Conference spring meetings. Oh, that's right. The spring Point meetings Claire, are coming. Alabama. So that's right. I will drive over, spend some time in uh, Baton Rouge on Friday, and then scoot on over to Point Claire. So I will miss the Saturday and Sunday games that we are going to play in. How's that? Well, that's okay. You'll be back for the Super Regionals that's next right. weekend. That's right. I'm I'm all about that. He'll, no, he'll be I, listening to the games on Radio Pup. That's well, he'll, yes. right here. Oh, no, yes. He, he, we'll, we'll radio be, Pup's on his phone. I do know that. We'll be uh, we'll, we'll be in tune. Trust me. I had, um, you know, I knew the conference spring meetings were coming up because they're always during the baseball tournament. But I had forgotten that they start as early as they do uh, on Saturday. The, all right, this is going to be your first uh, your first rodeo. As uh, the athletic director here of the of the Sun Belt meetings, anything in particular you'd like to see come out of this? Well, I mean, to be real honest with you, I'm going in with eyes wide open, ears wide open, and uh, I want to be there and support our three head coaches who attend those meetings: uh, football, men's, women's basketball, our CEO, obviously, our athletic represent, faculty athletic rep. Um, you know, I just I'm going to use a lot of this opportunity to really get educated and get engaged. And uh, make sure that um, you know that we we have a strong voice at the table, and uh, and and go from there. So, but it is the first rodeo. It is, and so you know I'm not naive to to realize it. You know I've still got to get my hands around a lot of issues at the conference level. Been focusing on the campus level, sure. you know, of late, and so I, I know look forward that, to it. I know that uh, one of the athletic directors in the league over at Appalachian State's yeah. a good friend of yours. Uh, have the two of you spoken about the upcoming meetings? And because he's already had that opportunity Correct. to rodeo. Yeah. Doug Gillen is the AD at Appalachian State, a uh, good friend. We haven't spoken much about the meetings per se, other than are you going to be there? Is your spouse going to be there? His will, mine will not, unfortunately. But uh, look forward to connecting with him. And and you know, I do know a handful of others in the league as well. So I'm excited. I'm excited from a from a uh, just a connectivity standpoint, but also this will really allow me to feel like I'm, I'm starting to truly get engaged at the conference level. Uh, now, now, if I may, Jay, uh, Dr. Brian Maggot, our guest, uh, you said that you're going um, to support, you know, the coaches. What, is there anything specific that they've talked to you about that they'd like you to, um, uh, I guess, have their back or, or, or you know, or we really up. haven't yet uh, between – I do have some time set up to, to do some visiting between now and Friday, which leaves me really this evening and tomorrow if that gives you my time frame. Um, so we're keeping you from that. <laughs> you are. It's, hey, listen, I'll always come when you invite me. I love it. Thank you for doing that. You did – you were in Phoenix, what, a couple of weeks ago. Wasn't yes. that some it was. national yes, athletic directors? It was. It was. It was in uh, the uh, Fiesta Bowl Summit, and uh, that actually gave me an opportunity to – hang out and meet and talk with the uh, Sunbelt ADs who were there at that event. Not all of them were, but uh, allowed me to do that. Plus, uh, I was able to spend a little time uh, with the uh, AD at Tulane and um, Iowa State and just, just some other programs. Really good for networking and, and just connectivity is what that was for, but yes. Um, there were a couple of, 
announcements that have been made in the last, you mentioned Tulane, and I thought about football right away. A couple of announcements made in the last week or two about mm-hmm. some scheduling adjustments uh, for the 2018 mm-hmm. football schedule. Was that something that you initiated? Yeah, so um, I believe that adjustment centers around New Mexico, moving the New Mexico State back a week or later, one week later into the season. I was happy to accommodate that. Um, I'm trying to make some adjustments um, with our 2019 schedule. Uh, Again, that's another year where we would have currently five games at home, but six in the state of Louisiana with the Mississippi State game, you know, being in in New Orleans. So that's that's obviously a good thing. But... um, I'd like to make some adjustments here and pick up another home game. That's going to involve some trades, if you will, and it's it's challenging this this close to the you, date. You said that you like the football scheduling thing. O- oddly enough, I do. I don't uh, know why. Okay, but uh, so d- glutton for you, punishment, Jack. You, you almost <laughs> came across like like Monty Hall and playing. Let's make a deal. Uh, is that is that the part you like about it the most? Uh, yeah, that and just kind of piecing this giant puzzle together and 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 figuring out. You know, not only who could maybe accommodate your needs, but um, who matches up well with you. You know, to, uh, again, I, I, I look at scheduling as an integral part of positioning your, your football team to be successful. You know, you, so yeah, there let's was, make a deal. There, there, <laughs> there was an article um, that came out in the, um, gosh, I'm trying to remember the name of the newspaper, and I'm, I'm catching a blank, but it comes out of Virginia. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a follow-up article that was written out of a newspaper in Biloxi. Um, there was a quote uh, that was uh, given by the athletic director at Middle Tennessee, Chris Massaro. Yes, I know Chris. Um, and, and we do, too, of course, having had mm-hmm. dealings with them when they were in the Sun Belt. Do you think anything's going to come of, of this, this rumbling about Conference, Conference USA, USA and Sun the Belt. Sun Belt saying, let's do some things that make sense geographically. Because the only athletic director from the Sun Belt that I've heard speak on the matter is Terry Mahajer at Arkansas State. Yeah. He's been saying it for years that yeah. it needed to happen. Yeah. Now you got some ADs at Conference USA saying the same thing. Mm-hmm. Is, there, is there some fire with the smoke, do you think? Well, I, I certainly think there's smoke. Uh, I think people are starting to recognize the value uh, and the importance of thinking regionally. Uh, it's just, you know, from a resource standpoint, it makes, a, it makes sense on so many levels. So, you know, I think it, at a minimum it's, it's, it's causing, it's going to create some conversation, maybe some deeper level conversation than, than has ever taken place before. And, and I look forward to it. I, uh, you know, I'm, I would be all ears. I'm certainly trying to, again, learn as much about the, uh, the opportunity as possible. Um, you know, will we speak at it in, in Point Claire uh, about it? You know, there may be some sidebar conversations about it. I was about, about to say, it. it's maybe, not an agenda maybe, item. Maybe over but, an iced uh, tea yeah, or something. something yeah. that, you know, cold iced tea. Yes, we might talk about that. But, uh, no, I think your, your question, Jay, we're going to have to start thinking differently. I, I, I truly believe that because it just doesn't make sense, you know, to, to fly great distances or drive great distances uh, to compete when you've got quality programs you know, right here in your own state for us in Louisiana. I mean, think of all the great sport teams, all the great universities in, in the state of Louisiana. And if we're not all playing consistently, you know, to me that's a miss. But but we'll, uh, I think conversations will start to, uh, to get a little bit deeper. Personal opinion. You have, um, the last time you were here, I think we talked about you going to St. Landry Parish. Um, and visiting with the folks uh, over there. You've been to Vermilion Parish recently. Yeah. I was specifically interested in that trip because it does seem as though when you start talking about parishes that surround Lafayette, mm-hmm. Vermilion might have the most support for the university out of all of them. Um, how was that? Great. Great experience for me. You know, all these trips are fantastic because it just allows me to get out and, and see and visualize not only the the landscape and the regions, you know, geographically, but to, to see the communities, talk with people in those communities. Vermilion was fantastic. That, that uh, parish outreach trip and then the um, Abbeville coaches caravan, we had that that night. So we tied it all in together. So I, I was out and about throughout the uh, entire parish, and then I met all of our head coaches, or about six or seven of our head coaches and student athletes and staff in Abbeville that evening for our second, uh, for our spring coaches caravan. Great turnout, fantastic people, beautiful community, Abbeville. Oh, Abbeville. Really nice. I actually lived there really, for did a you? couple of years a long time ago. 
That's where uh, all my my in laws live as well. Is and, that right? And very impressed I was. Seriously. I noticed very that uh, that on Twitter you you definitely uh, enjoyed some of the cuisine over there. Shucks, oh shucks, oh shucks. <laughs> and, and then uh, I've got to get back over that the way. There's a, I was uh, informed of a place to maybe get some of the best po' boy sandwiches ever. I don't remember the name of the the little local restaurant, but it's it's uh, this way, you know. Heading, heading toward Abbeville. So anyway. Um, you, you talked about maybe villagers. A, I was about uh, to say the villager. It, that's, villager that's it. That's in, it. In Maurice, yes. yes. And, and when you go, that's it. simply order the villager. Don't worry about any other Just kind of Just get the villager. Boy. I will. Get the villager and thank us later. And then I was told to, I need to try, I think it's a place called, is it called Sweers? Does that ring a bell? It's almost like a convenience store yeah. with a little kitchen in there. Yeah, maybe. yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was told you get great food there too. So, but there, You've probably, like how many... <laughs> Since you've been here, you've probably been given like a hundred oh different places to go it try is. the cuisine, and I'll, and I and I'll take them all. You know, I'm a, I'm kind of a food junkie like that. I, I love the local. But dyes. you stay, but you stay in great. You haven't you haven't put on any weight since you've been I, here. I, yeah. I think I've lost some weight, honestly. And I think that's just the now, schedule. How does that happen? Not sleep, not <laughs> sleeping, um, going nonstop. A little bit of stress, a little bit of worry, but but just and, and when I say stress and worry, I don't mean that necessarily as a negative way. I mean there's there's such thing as good stress, right? As we know that. And it's just the stress of, you know, realizing what you're responsible for. You know, over 400 student athletes, 100 staff members, uh, 16 sport programs, um, day-to-day decisions—all great stuff that comes with the chair. Yeah, but uh, it does it does uh, take its toll on you from you, a sleep standpoint. You know, he says all all great stuff, and 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 I'm sitting here going, wait a minute, not every day's a holiday. No, absolutely not. You know, uh, if it was, there'd be no reason to get compensated right but uh, it's uh it, it, there's so many more good days than, than not i'll say that well jay this is a, a guy that enjoys football scheduling there you uh, go as he said espn Scott, there 1420, you go <laughs> espn1420.com dr brian magger with us yeah i've uh, talked to a few people who do football scheduling yeah i've talked to one who said he's enjoys it well yeah. let me, you're looking at him right yeah, exactly. <laughs> let, exactly let me uh let me ask you this dr maggard what is the ideal football schedule if you're if you're mm-hmm. trying to put it together so it could it could look one of two ways um, it could be of your four non conference games you know you have at least every year at least two of those need to be at home because you're always going to have four conference games that sure. gives you a minimum of six games um, within those four uh, those two road non conference games it would be fantastic if uh, we could get one of those Maybe not every year, but every other, every two years, um, you know, like in New Orleans, in, in the state of Louisiana, right? So whether it's kind of a, a neutral site game, and that'd be fantastic if you did that with your Power Five opponent. Another scenario that's that's really good that I want to start looking into is getting into to finding home and home opportunities with Power Five opponents. Now, when you do that, you got to realize <clears throat> that certainly we we. Uh, we rely heavily on guarantee monies. Sure. So let's just say, for example, you were going to host a, a Power 5 opponent on the year you do a home-and-home home with them. Well, then you're going to have to uh, also get another buy game or another guarantee game. So now you're playing revenue. two Power 5s. So now you're playing two Power 5s. Yeah. But, again, you when you do that, you're, you're looking to line up a home-and-home home matchup with somebody you feel like you can be competitive with. And so it's um, – and in that scenario, you're going to have six home games in a year, right? Two of your non-conference games are going to be Power 5 opponents, and they both could be on the road, right? And then you'd have two of the four at home, plus your four conference games. The, talk to me for a, a minute. Give me your opinion about the Power, the power 5 home and home. Mm-hmm. Is the, what, what is the purpose of that? Is that, is, is, is that to increase attendance? Is that to... Um, maybe get a little notch in your belt one day. Um, I, I, I want to bring Power 5 games to Lafayette. Absolutely. I, I want to bring Power 5 opponents to our home and, uh, you know, for our fan base. I mean, I want them to be able to come in and, and, and see a, a power, power 5 program at home and us playing them. And, uh, you know, I think we're, we're starting to see more and more <clears throat> the day coming where even, you know, some of your Power 5 programs are realizing, you know, it's tough to pay one point five, one point seven million dollars, you know, for a team to come in, and so I, I, I'm not so sure that ads at that level aren't starting to think a little bit different and say, look, 
we can just do a $250,000 money swap each year and I can get that opponent, you know, here for that. And then we'll go on the road, you know, and play them. So when I the, look, the, the, the majority of athletic directors and, and football coaches at that level certainly aren't there yet, but I think we're starting to see that mentality opening up a little. The last, and, and somebody, if I'm wrong, somebody's going to tell me because they're really good at telling me when I'm wrong. You're wrong. Thank you. But it seems as though the last several Power Five schools that have visited Lafayette, I'm thinking Oklahoma State, mm-hmm. Kansas State, Texas Tech, mm-hmm. um, they all have one thing in common. They're in the Big 12. I know mm-hmm. Minnesota has been here, and that was the better part of 50, I guess, more than 15 okay. years ago. Okay. Um, it, but it seems as though the Big 12 seems to be the league that's most willing yeah. to do that. you agree with that? Um Potentially, you know, I haven't really analyzed it that much, but I think there are, are, are programs out there like those schools, and I think there are some, you know, in other conferences that you, maybe just from a budget standpoint, they're like, you know what, the price of poker has been driven up so high, you know, by by certain schools who are now paying one point seven, one eight, one nine, you know, to bring people in. And I remember when I was doing this in Missouri, we couldn't touch that. So I was in the one million to one three million dollar range for a pay, and I was I would have a hard time finding schools accepting that because again, hold out for a one six, one seven, one eight payday. In, in uh, another follow up to the scheduling, Doctor Maggard, in terms of the the time of year it is, do you have a preference? Do you look and say, all right, well October. You know, it's not quite as hot. It's you know, it's not hunting season yet. We'd love more Saturday games there. Do you look at the months to months, or is it kind of just all right? We want this many home games and these kind of opponents, and and wherever it falls, that's where it falls. Yeah, you know, we have to protect um, most of October, November for conference games. Uh, we do have the latitude typically, and I think, and I'm and I'm learning this uh, as I go a little bit better. That I think the Sun Belt is open you know, very open to us having a non-conference game in October. They prefer October versus November. Okay. And so you'll see us, you know, uh, maybe scheduling a one of our four non-conference games in October if we have to or need to. I know Coach Hutchbeth, he and I talk a lot, he would prefer actually to play the Power 5 opponent later in the year. He feels like his teams get better and, and they play better later in the year. So well, you, uh, also, you also, when you do that, a lot of times you'll catch them between important conference games. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I know that uh, the, the Cajuns almost walked out of Gainesville, Florida yes. a few years ago with the win against absolutely. the number three team in absolutely. the country. Absolutely. I remember game that. that was played. I remember that. Uh, in, in November. So much talk now about national television and, and, the, and, and the opportunities that the Sun Belt Conference has. Uh, there are a couple of um, ESPN2 games, several ESPNU games. But for the second year in a row, the Cajuns do not have a home game on a Saturday in the month of October. Yeah, it's tough. As you as as you balance the value of television and and this as well, and I won't be surprised if this is a topic uh, that w- you guys get into. It will be. Uh, in, it will in, be. <laughs> in, in, in point clear, is there a law of diminishing returns when it comes to television in the middle of the week? Yeah, I think to some degree, some of it's how you look at it. You know, you can you can focus on the national exposure that you're going to get on a Wednesday or Thursday night. But again, that's that's dependent on you know if you're on ESPN U, you know, um, that means there's another game on another ESPN channel, right? right? So, and we're seeing, you know, with the demand of with networks needing more and more content, you know, throughout the week, that uh, what used to be perceived as a, you know, you're the you have the center stage, you know, when, if you're playing on a Thursday night, for example, that's no longer the case anymore. And so that diminishing return s- does start to kick in. So ESPN I'll always 2, take, yes. Yeah. ESPN, you know, is that what you're kind of You know, I'm for? just saying they're competing. You're competing yeah. with somebody, right? Because there are a couple of games where you, are, where you are the only one right. that, that that's playing, and those are the yeah. ESPN 2, ca- two. Uh, that, sure. that are either on Tuesday or Wednesday Absolutely, night. absolutely. But now you're starting to get earlier in the week, and then you're – then you look at the law of diminishing return with, okay, how's that impacting your preparation leading up to the game before, the game after? You know, so it's, it's, it's getting tougher and tougher to accommodate, you know, your, uh, your routine with what the television demands are. So, but television is definitely driving and dictating. We know that. What, what would you like to see? Have you thought about this very much? What would you like to see as far as television opportunities 
here because it seems as though Conference USA this year is going to be putting all of their games on Twitter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you've got, uh, I think there was one school that was talking about Facebook Live. Um, ESPN3 is certainly a, a – all of the Cajun football games are on e at least on ESPN3. Some are on uh, uh, a better um, uh, venue than, mm -hmm. than that. Where do, where do you see this going? Because yeah. I, I just see the Power 5 folks that the checks are getting bigger and bigger, yeah. and I see the ones for the G5 that are getting smaller and smaller. Yeah, we're having to become more and more creative on, on where we're putting our content and producing it. And, you know, it may get to the point, Jay, where, you know, University of Louisiana, we, we're, we need to start producing our own games, you know, and be thinking that way and then lining up with, you know, networks and, and trying to get them on there. I don't know. I mean, that's... A little bit down the road, obviously, but but to your question is, uh, you know, we want it, we want exposure. Obviously, we want exposure at the highest levels. Um, obviously, you can get that, you know, when you do play uh, Power Five opponents, you know, through their network deals. But from a consistent basis, you know, I definitely, you know, you want it to whereas your fan base, ideally your fan base in, in surrounding states who can't necessarily make it here, can watch you. And what you don't want is your fan base who are more local decide to stay at home and watch on TV instead of coming, you know, to the venue. So, but, but it's all about exposure. It's all about the different avenues. I mean, these, these handheld devices we all carry around with us, I mean, that's, people are more and more dependent on those now than ever. And, uh, you know, I think even your, your major networks are starting to realize that too. You know, ESPN and, and, and the different networks, CBS, they know that people can access this. They can access content through our smartphones, and uh, and so I think that's definitely the one of the the ways that are coming is that uh, people are going to resort to things like that. They're not going to have cable packages anymore. Um, and I know that's a big concern with cable networks is that they're losing viewership and, and customers because you know the day of cable TV as you the three of us know it, I think starting to change drastically. Yeah, I you know I remember the. Of course, I'm the one person in this room that remembers the days before cable TV. I do, too, though. I do. Um, three, three channels. Three channels. And I had to get out of my seat and go to the TV and turn the knob. Uh, I remember boy. that. that was how, in, how incredibly <laughs> Give inconvenient. Give me that remote wow. control, how guys. What are you talking about? <laughs> Come on. You know, to the, and, and, and now, today, yeah. if we don't have the remote in our oh, hands, uh -oh. if we can't find the We're remote. We're out of control. We have no idea we've, how to change a channel. We've lost control <laughs> if you don't have that remote in your hand. That's crazy. <laughs> That is just well, yeah, but pretty soon you'll just you know you won't need it. You'll just pick up your phone and say, "Okay, I'll just watch it on here." I don't feel like getting up. Right? No, you're exactly right, and I can watch it, and then it can be you know streamed at a later date, and I can if I if it doesn't fit my schedule, you know, I can watch it you know whenever or rewatch it. One of the things that uh, that is ongoing, and, and it's going to be interesting to see now that now that the home baseball season is completed, yes. uh, to see how you're you're able to go ahead and complete that's that's the home run challenge now. Yes. You know, I, I made mention. I went ahead and made my contribution. I, did I heard my, about that. I did it last the week. The record shows that you did. Thank you very much, the, the, um, by the way. But what I saw today I thought was very cool. Someone made a donation in memory of Vic Kilchrist, the peanut man. Ah, and so his name sweet. is going to be on that very uh, nice. on that board. Yes. Where yeah. I just thought that was so yes. cool. Yeah. Yes. It'll, it'll be there forever where it belongs. That's that's very special. That, that is, is very – so I have no idea who did it. I don't either. But whoever did it – Tip of the cap to you. Absolutely, absolutely. Absolutely a tip of the cap. But that is continuing. It is. Um, now that the baseball season's over with, now that, that Ryan and Melissa aren't there when you walk in saying, mm -hmm. hey – here I am. Um, what is the plan as far as continuing to get that word out? Because the last time I checked, you hadn't quite gotten to second base yet. Uh, I, we, as I was walking out of the office today, I was told we made it to second base. Oh, congratulations. So we'll, yeah, thank you. We have a double. We need, uh, we need to round third and come home, though. Uh -huh. We really need to. Phil I think Rizzuto would be proud. I, I believe the, um, the, the end date is August 22. Is that right? right. Just okay. before football season starts. Just before starts, football yeah. season starts. And certainly we, we recognize that certainly – after the conference tournament and, and, you know, depending on how our regional play looks, uh, when baseball completely stops, right, and it will at some point for us, we know that, you know, that it could be challenging, no pun intended, to see the home run challenge continue moving forward. But we'll just continue to promote it through social media, um, you know, email blasts and, and uh, opportunities like this on the radio and things like that. But, uh, you know, I, I would just encourage people, it's a great opportunity, you know, to – 
to participate, to support a program that has, I know, meant so much to this community, to the university. It's led by an unbelievable man uh, and his staff, and uh, we got great young men on that team. People love the Raging Cajun baseball program. I know that. Here's an opportunity to, again, just support it in a manner that can help greatly. We're getting, um, of course, Cajun baseball team is heading to Monroe. Yes. And then from there, they're heading to, to Statesboro. Statesboro. And then, you know, they're going to come home, and then Memorial Day comes. By the time all of that is over with, according to what I've been reading and the progress I've been seeing, ballpark should be done. It should be. So I think what we call substantial completion, right, that's a – construction term that means for the most part things are done um i believe is set for may 22 and uh you know so it's it's coming it's coming and uh i can't wait you know to see the finished product personally i know you can't either and um but even to see you know the progress between when the first game of the season was to to the last whether it's having just the glass in the windows you know on that upper deck and and uh, things like that it's starting to really come together you know the the brick columns and everything outside is coming together. It's it's phenomenal. I'll be real you excited though, guys, windows. when when all the you know the when all of our construction fence and everything is all removed, of that goes away. Yes, because then you can just truly see you know what it is. But but the company has done a fantastic job. No, that and they've and they've built it right. Unbelievable. I, I'm, I'm, Kudos. I'm very Kudos. very impressed. Me with, too. You and with, I both with what they have done. So happy. It's um, the elevator installation was completed. But I never got to ride it. Yeah, he, he carried the one, the all one that thing equipment. I wanted to do. One, thing one you time wanted. the elevator. Didn't get a chance get to that. do it. Come over. Well, you and I will take a ride. Are you more excited about the elevator or the windows, Jay? Because when you talk about the windows, you're like a little kid at a candy store. Oh, the windows in the, uh, the, windows in, in the in booth? The press box. Yeah. No, that's crazy. Isn't that right? <laughs> that is just crazy. Yeah. For, for folks. and Because and, and, they, they're operable, yes? I mean, no, you can they, raise they them. They slide. Slide. They you slide know, on tracks. You you take the window and you actually slide it on a track and it disappears over to the right and it's over in the corner and you sit there and you can't tell there were ever windows there. Gosh, that, that's that's awesome. Good yeah, for you. that's kind of a that's kind of a dream. I know well, that that well you've deserved. got to jump. Do you have uh, anything? Uh, for, for uh, Dr. Every, Maggard? Everything I was curious about in terms of the scheduling, uh, Doctor Maggard answered this time. I guess my only question is talking about food. When was the first time you got to try boiled crawfish, and, and how messy was it? Uh, you know, go? let's see. So down here, uh, my first crawfish boil uh, was in Erath. I came down for a few days. So after the announcement, about a week or two later, I identified three days, came down, had a series of meetings with head coaches, you know, direct reports. And uh, that Friday night, I left on a Saturday. It was here Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, left Saturday. I got invited to a, uh, a crawfish boil in Erath. So my first official boil was then unbelievable. You know, I, so I, would eat, I would eat crawfish three times a day. I love oh, this. I, I, I how, many, how many times have you had boiled crawfish oh, since you've been here? Can you count? Countless. Really? Countless. Yeah, really. As I mean, see, when you're a guy like him, everybody just wants to feed him. You're right. That is. I've been <laughs> blessed in that regard, and I was told. I was told when my wife was here for the announcement of my family, and people were talking about, you know, you're going to live apart, and I hope he's okay, blah, blah, blah. People were saying he'll be just fine. Because the culture down here is right. so inviting. People are right. going to either invite you over to eat or they'll bring food to you. And let me tell you, I have if I've not done one thing here, it's gone hungry. You know, one of the things, that, and I know I said something to you personally and privately uh, about this, but your daughter was accepted into Juilliard. She was, yes. And that is just so huge. <laughs> I mean, that's big. The only thing that's bigger than that is the, are the checks you're getting. Uh, absolutely. Right. So <laughs> as as happy as I was for her, you know, to for that accomplishment, I realized I'll be working until I'm 85. But, it, uh, uh, it is a, an incredible accomplishment. I don't know if is. anybody understands how difficult yeah. it is to to get in it there. Is. She was one of 13 accepted. You know, worldwide. Very proud of her. I mean, you know, as a dad, it just makes you. But but what I'm most proud of is when I go back when she started dancing at age three. You know, obviously, I, I would I would tell you that the the blossom probably didn't occur till maybe sometime around age ten or maybe a little higher, and that's when people start noticing, hey, there's some talent there. But her work ethic, her drive, her passion is 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 something that I look at and I say, shoot, I want to be more like her. Um, but I'm always very happy for anyone who enjoys what they do, and she's not only passionate about dance, but she enjoys it. And so for her, it's not work. You know, it's, uh, it's her passion. And uh, to boot, she just has a great work ethic. 
So, but it'll be fun. I'm, I'm excited for her to step on a new stage. Right, New York City, literally a new new stage. stage. Columbia, Missouri to New York City is a big jump, but she is familiar with that area. We've been up there for some different, you know, summer and winter programs for her. So, and it's a small school, and so she uh, she knows about six of the thirteen girls. It's a small world, the dance mm-hmm. world of this incoming freshman class, and she knows probably three or four young ladies who are, would be upperclassmen there. So. Uh, it'll it'll be fun. I'm excited for her and uh, just to watch her grow and develop. Dr. Brian Maggard uh, has been our guest, Director of Athletics at the University of Louisiana. Uh, Dr. Maggard, thanks for stopping by and being generous with your time. Folks, if you see him, we don't even have to ask you, but we know you're going to feed him. So uh, enjoy the cuisine, <laughs> and, um, and uh, again, thanks for the, the time. The pleasure is always mine. I'll, I'll, I'll come anytime. Thank you.